rod end, hind end I could get is half inch. These holes here are three five eighths. So I just went by cut this ply and pick up a piece of tubing that I'm gonna cut out. Let me get it, I'll show you. Bushing. Maybe make a bushing. Maybe. With inside down, I couldn't find it. Inside diameter that's um, half inch. I don't know what size that is. So I'm gonna take the saw and cut this through and it'll make it smaller. And I'm hoping maybe I can wedge it into here both sides and run a half inch bolt through there. That's a half inch bolt. And I do then I'll be able to put this through and that through there. See the slot. Nice. Yeah. But I don't know if they make the heim with a five eighths. I've got some old heim in, so you hear it. Let me see. Until you get up to the big ones, and that's for a steering shaft. Right. You hang it down a seven eighths, I think. Okay. This might be five eighths here. The problem is this is too big. Yeah, that's five eighths. sure this is a left-handed thread one. Yeah, it is. See the line on it? Mm -hmm. That means it's left-handed thread. Mm -hmm. See the other one might be right. Yeah, right. See, it has no line. That's left, anything that's marked, that's okay. left. That's right, the same thing with. That's good to know. Yeah, this, this is left. Okay. This is right. Oh, wow. And then I went to a local race car shop. Let me show you this. Mm -hmm. And the guy told me they had no markings to indicate left or right. And I didn't say nothing to him, he's the expert. Mm -hmm. But that's the left handed thread. You see, that's marked with all them crosses. Yeah. That's a left-handed thread. So that guy didn't know what he was talking about. Uh, okay. I didn't argue with him. Right? Well, see, that's why we got guys like you to talk to, Fred. <laughs> uh, but this guy's been working there for years. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that. I didn't know that till just right now. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, most people don't. Yeah. Yes, that's again, perfect. Perfect. But the problem I got here, this female is and male. female. And I don't know how, you know, I can't do it that way. Unless, and it's fine thread, I were to take a fine thread bolt, which is, but I haven't got a left hand thread, but I could do this and weld this on to a steel rod. Yes, I could cut off. And I'd have one side, but I can't do the left side. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. The left-handed thread screws you up. But I do know now that they do make five eighths. Right. So I may be able to go someplace and get So one. if you can't sleeve it, then we can. Right. Okay. But Tomorrow, and another thing we're going to do is uh, take the exhaust manifolds, turn them around backwards, but that ain't going to work on this one, this side. This is got an exhaust port coming out here. See, they had a tube that ran from here around the front of the motor. 
over to the other one. And these, this exhaust came around here, went in here, and came out of here. So I guess I could probably weld a plate over the end of that, but that'd be ugly. Okay, I'll figure something out. But this is the flathead we're going to put in it. Yeah. And uh, next thing we're going to do is uh, Ford water pumps. Their motor mount is right here underneath like this. So you got to build the motor mount here. Then you got to connect it over here where a Mercury water pump, same year, 5051, comes straight out from here and it makes like a tab and you can just weld a plate here and set them on it. Oh, wow. This one's a little bit difficult, <coughs> but I can get it. All right. Okay. So uh, I learned that when I was 14 or 15 years old. I took a Mercury and put it in a 44, a 53 Mercury. It has the same kind of water pumps as this, but a 50, 50, 49, 50, 51 has the tabs that come out. And I put a motor like this in a 40 Ford and I had to order water pumps. And this was in about 64 and they were almost impossible to get. And they cost, back then, the two of them were 40 bucks a piece, mm. which was big money back then. Yeah, it probably cost less now. Because <laughs> the um, car, that I, the 40 Ford sedan that I put it in, it cost me 40 bucks. Oh, wow. And the water pumps cost $40. So that's our next deal is getting this thing up in position, and we'll do that tomorrow. All right. So you got the wheels. Now, what uh, bolt pattern are the, uh, how are you going to do those uh, wheels and adapters? Or Yeah, the, the wheels, the rims themselves are uh, five on four and a half. Okay, and that's five on four and three quarters. Right. And the front ones are five on five. Okay. So I got to get an adapter. When I get the uh, uh, disc brake kit for the front, I can order it with any bolt pattern I want. So I'll order it with a five on four and a half. Okay. And then just stick it on there. You were over here the other day and showed me we had a problem with the calipers. And what I'm going to have to do is put a spacer here about that big inch and a quarter inch and a half to move the wheel out away from the caliper. Right. And the same thing up front, but it's not a big deal. Cool. But I'm very pleased. Did you see the uh, steering box over there? Let's take a look at that. We got in, that's a Vegas steering box. And I built a mounting bracket that uh, holds it. And uh, very simple. And you see where the pit mark is on it. It'll go, the drag loop will go from the piston arm over to the right side of the car on the front of the axle. And I built that piece on the bed over there where they did with a hookup and everything worked fine. Oh, neat. Just got to shim it a little bit, hmm? What's that? Shim the, uh, the arm. Uh, yeah, and the holes. Yep. Yeah, I gotta figure out how to do that. But I'm getting closer and closer every day. Cool. And tomorrow you're ready for the uh, shocks? Yes. Nate. Yeah, we'll, if I get them and they'll work, we'll put it, pick the motor out and set it over to the side, put the shocks on. And then once I do that, I'm gonna order the uh, disc brake kit for the front and the uh, Spaces for the back for the adapters where I can get it up on the wheels. All right. And Once you get a rolling chassis, then. Yeah, everything starts going together better than. Night. Very yeah. night. Wow. It's, it's, uh, it's come together really, really fast, right? Yes, it has. Uh -huh. It's been about, what, three weeks? Something before? like that, yeah. yeah. I'll have to take a look. And I've had a lot of uh, days that I didn't do anything. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, if I could stay on it continually, I could have it done in a, two months with no problem. Right. Yeah. Very, very cool. Fred, you need to start pumping these out. These are 
Very, very cool. <laughs> well, let's wait until I get it finished. Right. <laughs> I'll decide I think it's cool or not. Right, all right, cool. Here's another one that I called my buddy over in Tampa and was talking to him about it. And he's an Alfa Romeo freak, but uh, I've got three or four Alfa Romeo four-cylinder engines in the corner over there, and he suggested that I put two of them together, one in front of the other, and it would look similar to the real engine that was in here, hmm. and just run it off the back motor. Oh wow! But I'd already I'm committed to this. I want yeah. the Ford flat. I like the flathead. I think yes. it'd be neat. Yeah. yeah. Probably still have as much power though. <laughs> no, that these things only did a hundred horse, I think. Yeah, yeah. hundred, hundred and ten if there were hot motors. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks for it. Okay. What we've done yesterday was I built this motor mount, and Ford water pumps go in like this. Ford trucks come out like this, and Mercury mm -hmm. come out like this, and they got a tab. Much easier to build. A motor mount, this thing, I had to cut three pieces of metal, angle it this way, and then the bottom piece that goes across, I angled it, welded it all together, and we just finished welding the motor mount into the car. So now, what we're doing, I'm gonna put a, I made a gusset to go here, and this gusset will weld like this, and that'll give it more support out here, and then I'll cap it off to make it look a little better. So that's where we're at now. Let's talk about this uh, this uh, drag link over here. We were talking about what it, what we were gonna do with it and uh, you did it. <laughs> okay. Let's see what you got here, Fred. The drag link, uh, this is a Vegas steering box. And I went over to a friend of mine that uh, sells sprint car parts and this is a radius rod, but we took the radius rod and put uh, high ends on each end, rod ends. And then we, uh, this thing was designed for a, um, oh, a big 5 8 inch hole. And the only rod ends that I could get are half inch. So what I did, this one I'll show you over here, I'm going to finish it. That's a half inch bolt. It drops right through there, right through there. But over here on the other end, I was trying to figure out how am I going to get this half inch stuff to work. So I used a little bit of engineering, half inch bolt, and that's a 5 8 inch hole there. Well, I took a, uh, a 7 16 inch 3 8 drive socket, drilled it out, drove it down in there, and I'm going to cut this off. And what it made was a shim. And, now the hole in here is half inch. You see how tight it fits? Oh, that's beautiful, yeah. Yeah, it fits perfect. So I got to do it to the other end, the same thing, and uh, we'll have that done. I don't know if we talked about this before, but I had to weld, build this piece right here to weld on for the drag link that comes from over there to here. And uh, because this is the tie rod, and that's where the tie rod hold is, and then I had to build that and weld it on. And what are these tie rods from? The tie rods came out of the 56 Ford pickup truck. Okay. This is all 56 Ford here. All right. And uh, we cut it down, narrowed it, put it in, and I still got to clean it up some before I'm done. But we just put the motor mount in just a minute ago, and I welded it right there and now I gotta wait until I turn the car over the frame over to weld the bottoms and the sides and I'll get that done but this will hold it now we're going to gusset it in and it'll be done that part then we'll build a transmission mount and that'll be done all right that's some excellent progress Fred yeah you're working you. hard <laughs> that took almost a day to build because you got to figure out where it goes, how it bolts up, how to bolt it up, and uh, it's not just, that's a custom part. Yeah. Now this is a uh, going to be a very short drive shaft, huh? Oh, yeah, that's a long one compared to some of them. <laughs> we put some up on the, and these sprint cars that are three inches long. Oh, wow. And as long as you got the, uh, where it can move yeah. and twist, there's no problem. Okay. Yeah, that's, that'd be neat.